you shouldn't doubt yourself. You shouldn't. You shouldn't doubt your abilities. I don't think it's something that is necessarily healthy and it can be really, really bad. But if you're a person who has this problem, there are ways to fix it. And you can get a lot better. And that's what we're going to talk about in this video. I had a, a student once, and I forgot his name. He was in my college algebra class, and he was a bodybuilder. That's, that's one thing I remember. He was, like, really buff, and we always talked about, you know, workout routines and stuff like that. I would always ask him, like, you know, what he does and all that. And he had a very, very uh, strict diet. His diet was super, super strict. Anyways... When I first met him, he told me he was really bad at mathematics. And I think he had failed uh, a math class before. Maybe the one he was taking or the one before. I'm pretty sure he had some rough times uh, with math in the past. And so he was just really concerned, uh, you know, about passing. And he came to my office, you know, for the first time. And I showed him some stuff on the board. And he turned out to be the kind of person that when you show him something like one time on the board, he gets it. And not everyone is like that, right? Some people, you, you have to show them mathematics multiple times. I mean, I had a student once where I was showing her how to graph a circle. And I showed her how to graph it. And then she tried and she couldn't do it. And then I showed her again. I just changed the numbers couldn't do it. Then I explained it a different way. It couldn't do it. it. took like five or six tries. She finally got it. Sad part of that story is she got it wrong on the test. Anyways, <laughs> back, but she did good. She did good. She has a good life. She did good in the class. So the bodybuilder guy, when he saw an example, he was able to just reproduce it immediately and do a similar example with different numbers or maybe even a different function. And he was able to learn really quickly. And he was a person who doubted himself. And all it took was just a little bit of communication, right? Like, show this guy something. Can he do it? Apparently he can. Confidence is through the roof. And that's how you beat it. That's how you beat self-doubt. And that's the really, really bad part. That's, that's the dark truth of it all, is that to... Get over self-doubt. The best way to get over that is to do and be successful at what you have doubts about. So, for example, if your self-doubt is your college algebra class, you're going to have a really hard time in that class if you're already failing and you're trying to come back because of that self-doubt. Because how do you believe in yourself if, if you've never had that success? So you have to have some success to latch onto, some positive experience. And that's normal for anything, right? It's, it's like if you're trying to learn to ride a bike and every time you get on the bike, you fall and you hurt yourself and you cut your knee. Maybe you even bleed a little bit. Like it's not fun, right? So you never have a positive experience. You never think you can do it. So when someone says, hey, do you want to learn how to ride a bike? You have self-doubt. The same thing happens in mathematics and in everything in life. And so to beat it, you have to get your first success. And that's where you have to dig deep. That's where you have to tell yourself that, hey, Everyone struggles. I'm in this phase now where I'm having a hard time with this. It's normal for this to be hard. I'm going to get there, right? It's like learning, let's just say, discrete mathematics. That's a really tough math class, right? Mostly computer science majors take that class. Uh, math majors don't really take that. It's really for computer science majors. You, you do logic, you do sets, you do counting, um, you do some graph theory, generating functions, some induction proofs, um, Ramsey numbers. I mean, you do all kinds of really cool stuff in that class. In any case, that class is extremely challenging, right? So that's a class, I think, where you know people have a lot of self-doubt about it. And again, the only way to overcome that is to have that first success. So again, you have to dig deep and, and try to find that first success. And if you can't find it, if you can't find that for success, because if you don't have it, right, just realize it's hard for everyone. A class like discrete math, right? Hard for everyone. Everyone goes through it 
or even riding a bike, same thing. Learning to drive a car, you know, the first time you're behind a car, you're braking fast, you know, and you tell yourself, oh, I'm never gonna learn. No, it's part of the process. And I think that eliminating self-doubt from your life in general, not, not just mathematics, but from your life in general is gonna help you. So whenever you are confronted with say a new experience, you will be more comfortable and be better at succeeding at that experience because you don't have that self-doubt inside you. If you have that self-doubt, you are more likely to fail or not even try. So yeah, it, it creates a lot of problems. It, it really does. And I've seen it, you know, in students, um, they, some students really have a, a, an issue with that. I was really lucky that when I went to college, I mean, I just had a GED and I was in the class before intermediate algebra, like before intermediate algebra. And I got a 100% on my first test in college. And I remember a girl, she was in the elevator standing next to me and she said, congratulations. And I got really nervous. I, I wasn't used to people congratulating me, right? Um, and so that was a cool experience. And that gave me that, that hope and that inspiration and that, you know, it showed me that I could do it. So I didn't have that initial self-doubt when it came to mathematics. I had it in other subjects. Okay, so I have gone through it. Um, physics was one. Physics was the first course I ever took where I felt dumb, right? I got a 76 or a 77 on my first test. I have it here somewhere. I keep all my tests. I'm a nerd. Um, and <laughs> it said good work. And I thought, how is that good work? How is a 76 good work? That is not good work. Um, and it was, it was just a brutal experience. I, I, the teacher would give a signed dollar bill to the top score in the class. And I never got the dollar. I, I never got it. No matter how hard I tried, I never got that dollar. I was never able to get the top score. And all my friends got everyone that I knew and studied with in that class and I talked to, they all, like the group that I was sitting next to, they all got the dollar. I mean, a lot of people got the dollar, right? And I, I never got it. And I took two courses and this tradition of the signed dollar bill was done in both courses, but I was never, I was never able to get that dollar. So that's a situation where um, I had a lot of self-doubt. And then I went on to physics three and I, uh, I, I just didn't let it bother me. And I, I got an A in that one. So it worked out. So defeat that self-doubt. Stop, stop doubting yourself. Have some confidence. Believe in yourself. You know, it's, you can do it. It's, it's something, again, that a lot of people struggle with. And fortunately for me and my personality, it's, it's not, not a problem. But yeah. Anyways, thought I'd make this video. Hopefully uh, it helps someone out there. Hey, if you want to learn mathematics, I do have courses. They're actually on the Udemy platform. But if you get them, please use the links from my website, mathsorcerer.com, because it helps me greatly. One, because um, I've lowered the prices, and two, well, that helps you. And two, it helps me because otherwise Udemy takes, takes a huge cut. And subscribe if you want. Um, that also helps. Until next time, take care.